It's good to speak with you again, Richard, and we've uh, done interviews in the past, and um, they've all been very uh, uh, very helpful and informative. So looking forward today to hearing your views on social supply chain. Uh, before we start, can you provide a brief background of yourself? Yes, uh, Dustin. Uh, I'm Professor Richard Wilding. I'm Professor of Supply Chain Strategy at uh, Cranfield School of Management. I also currently have a role of uh, Chairman of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport in the United Kingdom. That means I've got 18,500 members in the UK. Th there's 33,000 members worldwide. And those members are all professionals working in the area of the movement of goods and people and their associated supply chains. So it covers a very broad um, you know, group of individuals. And really one of the things which is quite interesting about um, you know, institutes like this, Chartered Institutes, is our 100th anniversary in just a couple of years in 1919, um, is it's about innovation. And that's what I want to actually pick up on on this this uh, discussion with you today, Dustin, because in, innovation to me is innovation is taking ideas which are new to you and create economic, social or environmental value. So professional institutions and universities are key to creating innovation. And the social supply chain, and I'll define that in just a moment, is also critical in creating innovation within organisations. So that's a quick insight into, into me. I think you can find me on Wikipedia now and just Google me. You'll find more. So can you talk about what is social supply chain? Yeah, so social supply chain. So social supply chain management seeks to incorporate the social network, social interactions, and social data to enhance relationship management with all stakeholders in order to maximize value in the final marketplace at less cost to the supply chain as a whole. That's a definite, the long definition I came up with. But critically, what we're trying to do here is to use, if you like, uh, social media approaches, social, social interaction. It could be data as well, big data from social media, really to really improve the supply chain, uh, to maximize value for you know, the customers, of course, but also reducing costs for the supply chain as a whole. That's really what we're trying to achieve with this. And this is um, this initial this sort of concept has been sort of ticking away for a while, but it's really starting to come into its own currently. I mean, the Financial Times a couple of years ago did some um, you know did an article just picking up on the use of social media within organisations. They found that companies adopting social collaboration tools obtained a 15% boost in productivity, which is, you know, that's pretty significant gains, um, you know, by using such techniques. And also what people are starting to find is, is that, um, you know, I mean, there was some work done by Yammer, which is an internal uh, social network. You know, some organizations might be using it. But they found that that achieved 76% more visibility into other departments or locations when using Yammer. So what it's actually doing is it's also enabling people to create greater levels of transparency within, within the organization. They, they were also finding, for example, that um, it was, you know, getting a 37% increase in pro project collaboration. And 93% of business leaders agreed that these enterprise social tools stimulated innovation within their business. In other words, you know, ideas were, were shared. And going back to my definition, innovation is all about, you know, the, you know taking ideas which are new to you and creating economic, social or environmental value. So, so this is this is something which is coming to a fore, and I think that one of the challenges we have is that many organisations still try to manage their supply chains effectively through email. And I don't know if you're like me, but I'm, I'm getting you know a hundred plus a day now of emails, and the problem is, is how do we know which ones are important and which ones are really uh, really doing well? So. Um, what you find with the structuring of social networks, the important stuff comes to the surface and it's much more, you know, sort of real time in terms of what's happening. 
So that's uh, that's an overview. I've got a couple of cases I could share with you if that would be useful, Dustin. Uh, yes, that would be yeah. very uh, that'd be interesting. Well, just a couple of examples. Um, in the United Kingdom, there's a group called Travis Perkins Group, and this is a, a pretty large organisation. They're they're basic builders, merchants, and tools and do-it-yourself outfits. Um, basically, they've got um, about 1,900 outfits um, across the you know across the United Kingdom, 24,000 employees. And one of the things that happened with them was that they decided to go down the route of just using Google. And so, you know, they, they're basically, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're using Google platform. Um, and they had some bloatware which came with all their Google stuff, which was, of course, Google Plus. And they didn't really know what to do with this. What they actually did was they, they basically, at one of their internal conferences, somebody says, you know, oh, we need technical communication. One of the managers basically said, look, what we'll do is we'll set up a Google Plus group, thinking that, you know, um, probably within a few weeks, this will all be forgotten about and nobody will move forward with it. Um, the initiative was called Availability Plus. And what they did was they've got a Wix, which is, you know, business to consume now. Um, Wix is an organization I can pop into and, um, uh, you know, pick up, uh, do it yourself. Um, uh, stuff and and everything else and uh, what they did was they set up this uh, this google plus group um it, it's basically across their over 200 retail outlets and something very strange started to happen people started sharing what's great about google of course the google plus environment was that they all have google mobile phones so instead of people sending emails about things they would take photo and send it so in a store you know if something arrived from a supplier it didn't look great or there was a problem with it they'd take a photo if for example the store management system was saying hey you know look this screen is saying you've got stock you know they were getting quite angry they would take photos and send it through and the people in the head office were connected with this as well what used to happen was on supply chain or supplier issues or store issues it could take up to three days for a problem to be resolved in the old world of email. They're now actually getting problem resolution um, within an hour. And in fact, at the moment, you know, there's a bit of competition going on within the organizations. The last time I talked to them, they were getting problem resolution within 34 minutes quite often. So, you know, things like if something was supplied and it was supplied incorrectly, they had, for example, a, a, a set of screws which had a, a screw driver within the package, so the customers have the screws and the screw driver. It turned out that on some of the packages they had an incorrect size screw driver, so it wouldn't work together. Now, of course, that would be taken back to the store. The store could then put that onto Google Plus and ask all the other stores in the network, have you got a similar problem? That way, they've been able to raise, you know, improve customer service. They've been able to reduce costs dramatically. They've been able to create innovation because people do something great in a store, you know, to display things. They take a photo of it, and then all the other stores do it as well. They think, hey, what a great idea. So what they've really found is that's made some massive changes uh, within their industry. One final uh, little example, um, Dustin, because I know we're, we're a bit short on time here. Um, there's an organization called Two Degrees. They're working currently with organizations like Unilever, GSK, Asda, and Tesco in the United Kingdom. What they're actually using is they've built a collaboration platform, and what they call it is fully linked collaboration. And what this does is it's a proactively managed um, if you like, social network. So what they're able to do is they ma they measure exchanges of knowledge between the individuals in the supply chain. So if you're looking at, say, one of the big retailers, um, which they've been working with, you know, they've got over 300 companies on this. It's called the Sustain and Save Initiative, and they're getting massive benefits. For example, some of the um, some of the data I've got um, from them, you know, within the last year or so, 
Um, from having this launch, this initiative, 42 companies are saving £34 million pounds in operational costs. So you can multiply that by about $1.3 if you want dollars. Uh, they reckon the total estimated savings are over £100 million, and investments um, of about £16 million in various projects. The way this works is it's built around sustainability and saving money appropriately. And so, you know, somebody might say, we're building a new warehouse, we want to have LED lighting, somebody must have done this, um, you know, can anybody give us some advice? And people are able to share that knowledge around different things. So once again, it's innovation, it's, you know, sharing knowledge to create value for the different parties. It's been a major success. And uh, one quote from Barry Williams, who is the Chief Merchandising Officer of ASDA, um, of course that's one of the Walmart companies, he basically has said the exchange is creating value, not extracting value from the supply chain. The measure of success is that people are already saving money. And just an update on this, um, uh, Two Degrees have just launched an amazing new network, which is aimed at all businesses manufacturing 2030. So it might be worth having a look at that link. So that's, you know, uh, probably manufacture2030.com. Um, and this is, once again, one of these big exchanges where people can basically innovate through them. So we're finding social supply chain, you know, hitting the supply base. Of course, I could spend plenty of time talking about how we can use social data to interact with customers, our delivery, of course, as well. So we're starting to find apps which are, um, you know, updating on delivery performance, things like that, particularly going to the consumer, um, all sorts of stuff which is going on. And so I think we're going to see some dramatic changes within, uh, you know, within the way we manage supply chains. And we're also even finding that now social media is being tapped into, um, you know, uh, in supply chain risk as well. But Dustin, I just thought I'd share a final thought with you. Um, this was a this was a tweet I saw from a guy called at Matt Cuts, and he basically says, when you've got five minutes to fill, Twitter is a great way to fill thirty five minutes. And uh, an unknown tweet here, which is, on Twitter we get excited if someone follows us. In real life, we get really scared and run away. So I think the key thing about, you know, using these networks, understand they are different. You need to sort of dedicate appropriate time. But there's an awful lot of interesting stuff going on this air, going on in this area. I've got a couple of papers out about it, and I'm going to be presenting at quite a few conferences coming up around this whole area in more detail if people want to come and have a have a listen. And, of course, you can find me on Twitter at, at Supply Chain Prop. So, there we are. There's another social advert. Thanks, Richard, for sharing today. No problem at all, Dusty.